Hi, my name is Wayne. Like most boaters, I like to do things myself if I possibly can. And uh, I was really excited to find the Easy Snap uh, site on the uh, on the net. It's a DIY system for window shades for both RVs and boats and houses actually. Um, shades are great on boats primarily to keep the uh, uh, the interior of your cabins cooler and also keep the uh, UV off your upholstery and your dash and keep things from keep things from fading. I went ahead and, and measured things up and ordered the, ordered the system and I've installed part of it. I've got all the windows done on this boat except for this one and the windshield. And um, for the most part their instructions are great. Uh, they explain very clearly how to do things and what to watch out for. So I'll just cover those, uh, I'll cover those off and then we're going to actually make a pattern for uh, this wraparound windshield. I've already got a pattern made for this, so we'll do second steps for this uh, uh, for this window as well, and uh, and and go from there. So, however you attach your cover, they stay on the boat. And there's two types. This is a, a peel and stick, uh, which is most common for boats. The other type is is it looks similar to this, but it's got a little screw, and it would uh, it would screw in. So. The key here is to remember that these stay on your boat and that they're visible. And the, the thing that, that struck me right off for this boat, because all my windows are recessed, they've got big heavy bulkheads around them. So I'm pretty much limited to sticking my covers on the glass itself. That's all well and good if there's a black strip around like this, because these would go onto that strip and they're not gonna be too visible and they're not gonna be visible from the outside. However, if you've got a door like this, which is totally clear glass, and you stick these on, you're gonna have black dots all the way around. And you're probably not gonna want that when you're inside looking out using your, you know, using your boat. That's gonna, that's gonna stay there. So in this particular situation, I'm gonna go outside to the frame. And these will work on glass, they'll work on gel cot, coat they'll work on aluminum as long as it's smooth and as long as it's flat so we've got some surfaces here that we can you know that we can attach to and this cover is going to go on the outside of this that way I'm not going to be looking at these things all the time as they're uh, you know once I'm inside the boat this back window has got a black perimeter all the way around so it's bonus I mean, you, can, you can't see these things from the inside. I can't go out here because this door has to swing, you know, slide past and it would catch on the cover as well. So before you start, I think it's really important that you sit down and think about, okay, well, what's this all gonna look like when it's done? How am I going to attach the stuff and um, size your, you know, size your panels and, uh, you know, and whatever accordingly. Here's a totally different style of boat. In this instance, the windshield is, is flush. Uh, it's a great color. So if we were going to cover, uh, cover this, we would probably want our covers to go past the windshield and our, and our attachments would, would sit outside. We need to make sure that our attachments, that our cover was wide enough to be, you know, to cover those attachments. The other thing to watch is that this, win this window may look square, but I bet you money it's not. Uh, so that's why it's important to pattern. Even a window that you think is square is probably not. So getting the exact shape that you want uh, to, to size this, I would, I would make little dots where, you know, where my uh, attachments were going and then just make sure that I had a cover uh, pattern perimeter that, uh, that match that. Now we're gonna talk about pattern. The accuracy of your pattern dictates how accurate your cover is going to fit on your boat and, and how good it's going to look. For patterning, you need a pattern material uh, and there is a plastic that's specifically, specifically designed and intended for patterning. Uh, it's called pattern, it, it, it's, it's it's called patterning plastic. It's called Durastrom is a particular brand name. 
but this is not just regular plastic it's plastic with little fiberglass mesh uh, filaments in it so it's rigid it does not stretch in in either direction it holds its shape and that's very important because this cover material is exactly the same way so if you use regular poly just plain you know poly sheeting and you stretch it around here and get it all fitting nice you take that pattern off and build something onto a, a non-stretchable thing it's probably not going to fit so that's that's an important uh, an important thing the other thing that you want to have is that you want to have double-sided tape in order to keep the pattern in place once you've got it set on the windshield what i found to be the best is good old scotch brand double-sided tape now, they make two types they make a regular double-sided tape don't get that uh, because that's very difficult to get off after but they make a removable double-sided tape so that's the important keyword removable and this tape is just like it just it's on a dispenser it doesn't have a backing you stick it on and it's a little bit sticky but you just kind of give it a poke 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 and there you go it's sticky enough that it'll hold your plastic but you can take your plastic off put it on reposition it do uh, you know do whatever so in, in in my mind after you know after doing experimenting with all these different types of tape this is what I would this is what I would go for it okay so here we go I'm gonna I left a few areas of this that untaped to just go through and show what I found really helped so this is sticky on both sides but if you just give it a little tap tap with your fingers it uh, it will attach it's not crucial that it be absolutely straight or or perfectly in line or anything else i'm going to do a strip down i'm going to do a strip down here doesn't have to be right you know right close to the you know to the edge either i mean what it what you need to have is you need to have it so that once you position the plastic and you want to mark you know mark and draw your you know draw your lines that you that you're going to have a uh, a stable in place piece of plastic that's not going to be flapping around in the wind and, and whatever i'm just going to run a strip right around the middle here because what i want to do is i want to work this pattern from the inside from the center out towards the edges okay so i'm just going around again not being super super fancy just giving a little bit of an extra surface here that we can attach the, the, uh, the pattern to. This material, um, I, I, you, it's available online on uh, Am Amazon, but you need to buy like a huge amount of it. It's used for greenhouses and and uh, you know buildings and that sort of stuff. So it's typically sold in large amounts. I found uh, small quantities on JT's Outdoor Fabrics. That's an online, a Canadian online store, uh, and it's uh, six foot wide. You buy it by the yard, and that actually works because the Easy Snap fabric is also six feet wide and sold by the yard. So you can figure out how much material you have and get a corresponding amount of uh, of plastic. Pre-trim your plastic to about the right size, but leave yourself a generous amount especially if you've got a curved windshield because I don't know how this is going to go when I pull on this whether it's going to curve up whether it's going to curve down and if I just had a narrow strip from there to there by the time I get around it may be off up going up this way and I may have a you know I may have a gap and uh, and whatever uh, the other thing that I did with this that I think would be helpful because this is a fairly long strip is I is I marked the center and I marked the center of the windshield as well. And for uh, and, a, and a trick for 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 finding the you know finding the center center of things with a uh, with a tape is first of all get a, a curved tape, a flexible tape, not a you know not a tape measure. You can you can start from a point, measure to about center, pick a number, 32 inches, mark that 
go to the other side, measure 32 over, and even if those marks don't exactly align, midway between those two marks will be center. So that's kind of an easy way of, uh, uh, you know, figuring out center. I drew a center line down my, down my pattern piece. I've got my center line marked here. So that's going to give me a, a reference point for, uh, uh, you know, for starting the pattern. So here we go. First time for me too. So we'll, uh, we'll hope it all works out. I'm just going to leave enough room up top that I can fit it up there. I've got my pattern started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to track it around in the center. I'm not going to worry about getting it top and bottom. I'm just going to track it around. And I want to get and, and the main reason for doing that is I want to get, I want to make sure that when I get all the way around here that that I've got it that I've got enough plastic to cover. And it looks like I've got lots in all directions so that's fine if i if i'd have started too low i may wouldn't maybe didn't have enough here or there i just had no way of knowing how that was all going to uh you know was all going to fit there so now that now that we've got that in place we can start and do this now this this plastic does not give and i'm going around a corner here so what we need to do is that we need to cut little darts or relief and now that I know that this pattern is pretty close and it's going to fit I can trim I can trim off all of that excess material as well which is going to make it a lot easier so here I can just cut I can cut in with little little cut marks as we go around and I can just pull this down and make sure that it's coming down nice and nice and snug, and it's fitting flat and flat and smooth on the uh, on the windshield. That's not looking too bad. I'll go around a little bit farther on the bottom, and then we'll go up to the uh, we'll go up to the top. Get Mr. Windshield out of the way here. Thought about taking these windshield wipers off, but I looked inside and it looked like it was going to be a pretty hard thing, so I didn't. I'm going to trim a little bit more of this excess off. The beauty of a pattern is if you screw up, you've only wasted a buck or two worth of plastic rather than a than a fairly expensive piece of material that you'd have to order again in a small, you know, in a, in a small quantity. Now, I want this to fit nice and snug around here. scissor happy there right at the bottom but luckily it didn't work out pretty good okay so I'm going to start back in the middle and just do the same notching that I've done up top and get this pattern to uh, uh, to fit up into the uh, into the top part as well And what I've done is just with a with a black marker, just marked around carefully 
the, the edges where I want my actual piece to stop. And I've done that on the top and the bottom. Wrapped around, done it across here, across the end. So with that, our pattern is pretty much uh, ready, to, uh, ready to be removed. What I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning up the line that I, that I drew on the window itself. Cut it and get a, uh, get a nice uniform shaped piece of material. So I'll do this onto the material. So that's about it. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a half an inch to each end. And the reason I'm doing that is that I'm not 100% certain when I pull this, this heavier piece of material around with the fasteners in place, whether it's going to come up a little bit shorter or not. And if it's shorter, I want to make sure I've allowed some material. If, I, if it doesn't work out that way, I can just easily trim that little bit off. So I'm, I'm ready to transfer now. What I'm using is called a China marker. Uh, this is a, a, a readily available pencil. You can buy it uh, virtually anywhere. It's, it's white, which I need for this, this material. It's designed for drawing on glass and other hard objects, but it, it works like, like a darn so for drawing on this stuff. So I'm just basically being very careful that my pattern is laid out flat and I'm just drawing along nice and smooth and straight. We're done marking the perimeter of the pattern, so we'll take it off. Looks like we've got a nice continuous white line all around. So our next step is to uh, uh, start cutting this thing out. Because they're curves, we're pretty much going to be using scissors. I can use a straight edge and blade across the end, but everywhere else I'm afraid it's a curve, so that's not going to be an option. So we're done all the, the uh, curved parts. I'll show you uh, a, a much faster and more accurate way of doing the, uh, the, the, the straight cuts. I know this is straight because it's the back, you know, the back portion of the window. So if you've got a, you know, one with with straight edges, by all means, this is a better way to better way to do it. A plywood or something underneath so that you don't cut through onto your floor or your table or, or whatever. And then basically just like so. So that's quick and easy and it gives you a really nice, uh, a really nice straight line. So Before we can attach our fabric, we obviously have to install or, or put in place the, uh, the fastening devices. These little peel and stick guys, um, need a clean oil-free surface so if, especially if you've waxed or or put a uh, you know any kind of a treatment on window you need to uh, you need to clean it so uh, isopropyl alcohol is what they uh, is, is, is what they recommend I happen to have these lens cleaning wipes which are just that they're little they're little sheets uh, that are soaked in isopropyl alcohol so they're already they're already uh, wet. I've pre-marked where my little dots are going to go. And that's in accordance with the recommendations uh, from, from Easy Snap. They recommend approximately every, every 10 inches. So I'm not gonna worry about cleaning the whole area. I'm just gonna clean the areas where I know I'm gonna be putting a, putting a, a fastener. 
So we go back to this window here. I'm going to be doing it on the outside portion. So I've got a mark there, I've got a mark there. So this is a bit tedious. We don't have to video the whole process, but basically I'm just going to go all the way around the, uh, around the boat. These cloths tend to dry out, but I have an, an extra little uh, you know, bottle of this stuff. So I just keep re-soaking this, uh, re this little towelette to keep it moist and uh, just working my way around. We're back on the boat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place the, uh, get our, our fabric uh, onto the window. We've got our little pins already on our, on our attachments. So we push those pins right through the cloth and then we put a little uh, snap over on top. So I've got my center here. So that's that's a fairly important one that I want to get correctly positioned like so. So I just pushed it through. I want to get, get my bottom pretty close to being on there as well. Push that through and now I should have a, a pretty decent fit going across. And it's not looking too bad. So I'm basically just gonna work around, pushing through, pushing the little pins right through the fabric as we go. You wanna start from the center and work out. Because if you don't, if you start it at the end, you never know what you're going to end up with in the middle, obviously. So. tension this do not pull it really really snug because counter to, to intuition this stuff shrinks when it gets hot so if this sits out in the hot sun it's going to shrink a little bit so if you've stretched it already on a hot day it, it, it could end up putting a lot of stress on your uh, on your fasteners so our last piece is this door I wanted to demonstrate a, a couple of things by doing this at the last. So first we're going to get the, the first pin through which was not cooperating. Okay, so this is on. So what I wanted to point out here is that I've got this is this is the handle that opens the door. And I didn't want to cut it on the pattern because you could cut the pattern and then you could put the piece on and it doesn't fit exactly. And I wanted this, this to match. So a, a real easy way to, to, to mark a cutout is to just use regular, regular scotch tape, not the double-sided stuff. Stick it on. So with this tape on now, I could draw with a pen I could just follow the follow the outline of my cutout here. You know what? I'm going to put another piece of tape on it because I'm a little I'm a little close to the edge. I didn't realize the outline went that far back. So I'm just following that outline. So that's 
a quick and easy way of getting a good a good cutout around uh, around something after you've got the uh, after you've got the thing in place and then your marking doesn't show up you can just peel the tape off and uh, and you're good to go so we'll put a uh, we'll put our, our little clips on this one and then we'll be done so it's been a couple of days since we uh, did the install here notice that it's much much cooler which was the object of the exercise also I don't have to worry about my electronics and, and upholstery getting baked all in all I think it's a very very good system the uh, stuff certainly stays on we've actually went out in the boat with the back and side windows on and uh, no problem with them no problem with them staying on um, one note be sure and use that little tool when you're uh, when you're taking them uh, taking them off that would be the only caution that I would uh, advise but otherwise great system I'm very happy thanks